The mission of the Preservation Department is to ensure that the information resources we collect in all formats that support research and teaching at the University of Chicago remain available for long-term use. The library has extensive collections in many subject areas with rich holdings of rare and distinctive collections. Preservation is a high priority and our programs demonstrate the library's commitment to the care of these precious collections. Our two labs provide services that are central to preserving and providing continued access to our collections for users now and into the future. Conservation encompasses all of the actions taken toward the long-term preservation of cultural heritage. Activities include examination, documentation, treatment, and preventative care, supported by research and education. We are part of the larger set of people in a library who are stewards of the physical object. We make sure that the collections are usable for our patrons and able to be passed down to future generations. In order to do our work, we have to have knowledge of how books were constructed over time and place, going back centuries and spanning the globe. And we have to know how to implement repairs with respect to the object. I would hope that our library-wide collective effort will help to make our rich collections usable now and into the future. But one part in particular of what we contribute that is different from others in the library is that we are part of the historical conduit of bookbinding, papermaking, and printing. In a way, we are the voice of the many anonymous craftspeople who came before us. We study and illuminate their methods, reasons, and decisions. We understand in an intimate way how these items were constructed and try to do justice to their process by learning from what we see and repairing or rebinding volumes in a respectful and sympathetic way. The digitization unit captures and converts a variety of paper-based and media materials to preserve, increase access, and facilitate discoverability of the library's general and special collections. We focus on generating preservation-grade files utilizing cultural heritage cameras and imaging equipment. The unit collaborates with other library departments and external partners to further strategic library initiatives focused on building digital collections and supporting digital scholarship. With digital collections, you can conduct text analysis, georeference maps, you can compare images of a book or material from one institution to another without leaving your chair. Even better, you can magnify the finer details, things not seen with the naked eye. Digitization not only preserves collections through the creation of digital surrogates, but more importantly, it's transformative and really enables advancements in research and learning. The field is growing every day and more focus-driven technologies are being developed specifically for cultural heritage capture. Building of the Joe Enrica Mansueto Library has been one of the most significant steps towards strengthening our program for realizing our mission. For the first time, we have dedicated spaces designed and well-equipped specifically for preservation for the purpose of providing the widest range of specialized services to care for all types of our library collections. Our labs have been a critical stimulus and the foundation that has enabled the development of our programs, our ability to attract dedicated and specialized staff, and increase capabilities to preserve collections. When we moved into Mansueto, our technology advanced dramatically. We shifted from flatbed scanners to high-powered cameras, which enabled us to expand our services and increase productivity. We have a dedicated space for our everyday work, but we also have space for our specialized equipment. We have a range of types of treatment and analysis we can offer. In addition to repairing and rebinding bound volumes, we can stabilize corrosive inks, identify pigments and other materials, reduce stains, fill missing paper, as well as flatten, line, and matte paper objects such as prints or maps. An antiphonary from the Latin antiphonarium is a book that contains the musical portions of the divine office or the daily round of services that were performed in monasteries. An antiphonary is a specific type of liturgical manuscript, one of the common categories of manuscripts, many of which were illuminated, that circulated in medieval and early modern Europe. 
Other common types of illuminated and decorated manuscripts were Bibles, books of hours, genealogical rolls, and charters and maps. The Antiphonarium for Matins in the University of Chicago Library's collections is typical of these types of manuscripts. Its sheer size and the sturdiness of its binding are good visual indicators of how the book was used. It was propped on a large lectern, and the monastery's choir would gather around it and sing from it. The musical notation is large, and it can be viewed from a distance and in dim light. And the decoration suggests how this manuscript was valued by the monastery that owned it. This particular manuscript was probably copied in Spain between 1500 and 1600. The lettering is large and round and very easy to read. The leaves of the manuscript are made from parchment, which is an organic material made from the hide of a sheep or a goat that undergoes a rigorous treatment process to remove the hair and excess flesh. And then it undergoes stretching and bleaching to create a smooth and durable writing surface. The text and musical notation would have been copied by one or more scribes, and the decorated initials have pen work that would have been done by an illuminator. Students and scholars have been consulting this work for as long as it has been in our collections. In the 1970s, a doctoral student in music produced a detailed description of the manuscript that catalogs all the physical attributes of the book, including a descriptive analysis of the materials used to make the text in the binding and the student cataloged all the chants and hymns that appear in the manuscript, with interpretations of the historical and contemporary uses of that music. We retain this work as part of our file on the history of this manuscript in the collections. The Antiphonary has been the basis for theses and undergraduate research projects, and it has been the subject of scholarly publications. The Antiphonary has also been used in research on historical music notation, paleography, Gregorian chants, medieval manuscript culture and book production, to just name a few. The Antiphonarium for Matins came to us in virtually unusable condition. The text block had completely separated from the cover and no longer worked like a book. It had been rebound in the late 19th or early 20th century in a manner that was common for an average sized book. Since this book weighs 52 pounds, the previous repair had completely failed. In that previous repair, the cords that the text block had been sewn to were cut. And we decided that the only way that this was ever going to work like a book again was to completely disbind it and rebuild the mechanism in the way it would have been originally bound. There's a specific approach to any item that comes into conservation which scales up or down to match the complexity of the object. The first thing is to document the item both photographically and in a written condition report. There's a progression that a condition report follows that allows the conservator to discover problems and propose solutions. Once the problems are isolated, you can determine first whether the treatment is advisable and then how to proceed. For the antiphonary, we could tell how it had been constructed from physical evidence we found while examining it. I was the lead conservator in treating this volume. The volume was originally constructed in a similar way to other volumes from its time period. So we were not reconstructing a highly unusual structure. We had repaired books like this before, but of course they were much smaller. This volume was so much larger than the equipment we have. In the past, we came up with solutions for larger books, but nothing we've worked on was this large, 33 by 22 by five inches and over 50 pounds. We did find references to some equipment that was large enough for this book, but those pieces were in museums. We couldn't find anything we could purchase. We realized that if we were going to accomplish this treatment, we would have to build the equipment. The broken rebinding was removed. Many pages were loose and needed to be cleaned and damage repaired. Additionally, numerous pages had been sliced out for unknown reasons, and we had to reattach them to the other halves of their folios. This was a perfect opportunity for digitization, since individual folios were possible to capture in a way that the 52-pound bound volume was not. Once the antiphonary was returned from digitization, we re-sewed it onto large cords that we made from linen thread. These cords were custom made in the lab to match the size of the original cords, and they are strong enough to support a book of this size. Such cords are not available commercially, which is why we make them ourselves. Also during sewing, new parchment flyleaves were sewn on. The original flyleaf in sheets were either missing or the book had never had them, 
which leaves the first and last pages vulnerable to damage. After re-sewing the book, we press the text block to the shape it needed to be in to fit back into its case, and we line the spine. The size was perfect, which was lucky because often a book will not easily fit back into its case after conservation treatment. The case had the old cords still laced into its wooden boards, and they had to be painstakingly removed so the new cords could be laced in. Heavy cotton flanges were also glued to the spine to help attach the text block to the case. We decided not to glue the spine of the text block to the case, so the strength of the attachment would depend on the cords, the flanges, and the new fly leaves. The fly leaves were sewn to the text block with stubs, which could be adhered directly to the wooden boards under the lifted paste down end sheet, which was adhered back over the stub. The cotton flanges were adhered to the wooden boards on the other side under the lifted leather, which was also glued back down. This triple strength board attachment, as well as the repaired and stabilized text block, makes the antiphonary once again safe for handling. One of the best things about digitization is that it opens up access for audiences who might not otherwise be able to study materials like the antiphonary or the many other unique things the University of Chicago Library holds in its collections. When an early printed book is digitized, for example, it becomes useful to others as a point of comparison for a number of things that are important to bibliographic research and study of the material book in the hand press period. Collation, or how the book's choirs or gatherings of leaves were sewn together, the presence or absence of a colophon or printer's device, the position of blank leaves, these are all small details, but of great importance to understanding the physical copy that a researcher might have at hand. It is interesting and gratifying to observe that the more rare materials are made available digitally, the more it drives interest in the physical objects. You might say this is counterintuitive, but it is what I have observed and experienced throughout my career, and it's supported by our circulation statistics. The process begins when materials are being reviewed for selection. A lot goes into selecting and reviewing materials for digitization consideration, including copyright, user needs, and preservation concerns. Once an item is selected, we assess the condition. When capturing fragile materials, we work closely with conservation to ensure we utilize the right combination of tools and techniques to avoid damaging them. Usually, we will use wedges or cradles for books that do not open flat. We have L cradles and V cradles for all of our equipment. L cradles will keep a book around a 90 degree angle, while V cradles hold a book at an 80 degree angle up to 180 degree angle openings. Often, however, imaging is the smallest piece in a larger digitization workflow. The more time consuming part is processing or quality control, where we review the images to ensure the digital circuits are faithful representations of the original. After quality control, we generate access copies like PDFs and archive our master files. Finally, we pass these files on to our library colleagues to create that access point for users, which typically includes a link to a PDF made accessible through the library's online catalog, a finding aid, or a specialized website or interface. Comparing multiple copies of an early printed book and having the ability to enlarge high-resolution images to see the minutest details can give important visual clues that tell us how a book was made. As far as manuscript studies go, access to fragments of disbound leaves can be crucial to piecing together a lost text. That is just one of the aspects of the work of codicologists, whose work is greatly aided by the digitized manuscripts and manuscript fragments that are made increasingly accessible from libraries around the world. This is work that we want to continue to build on as it strengthens our collective knowledge base about early books and manuscripts. At the root of it, we are creating broader access to our collections, increasing our user base beyond campus, and making them available internationally. Even better, we facilitate discovery by providing a new medium to analyze collections through magnification, material comparison, enhancements, searchability, or text analysis. We are transforming the way in which people engage with these collections, expanding research and learning possibilities.